Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review today. We're going to look at the McFarlane DC Direct Batman the Animated Series Scarecrow. Now McFarlane is sort of continuing the DC Direct Batman the Animated Series line that ended a couple years ago. And mostly it's re-releases with cell shading. And that's all said and good. At least the build a figure, Connor McKing is going to scratch the itch for a new character. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, McFarlane Toys, Collect to Build Economic King, ages 12 plus, Batman the Animated Series, Scarecrow. Here he's in the package, couple alternate hands, a Sith, an unmasked head, and then part of Economic King. One side of the package, Scarecrow, Animated Series. Other side, not much going on. In the back, here's Economic King. Here's the rest of the wave. And at the bottom, there is his barcode, in case that helps anybody. Now, Scarecrow here is arguably the most valuable single release in the animated line. He will fetch a pretty penny on eBay. The only ones more valuable than him is going to be Alfred and Montoya. There's also a plan of chase variant to the Scarecrow, and I've had no luck. If anybody has an extra or has a lead on where to get one, please drop me a line in the comments below. I could really use some help there. So, with no further ado, let's open them up. And I did get the entire way from Target, and it wasn't easy. The first store I went to only had one figure. The second store I went to, they only had three figures. And then a few days later, I finally found Scarecrow. I haven't found the Platinum Chase variant of Scarecrow yet. If anybody has a lead on him or has an extra one, please drop me a line in the comments below. I could really use some help there. And it turns out I was able to get a Platinum Chase Scarecrow before I did this video. That way I can do them both at once. It is my understanding that each box of six comes with two Batman, one Robin, one Mr. Freeze, and two Scarecrow. And each box has one Platinum and one regular. Of course, some guy bought them from every single store here. Big shout out to my boy, Cajun Cody from Instagram for helping me get this. Much appreciated. I am still looking for another one to keep my unopened collection. So let's take a quick look. Age of 12 plus, Condiment King again. McFarlane Platinum Edition. Remember that means here is Scarecrow. The figure is exactly the same sculpt, but different paint job. He's got brown and yellow instead of red. I wish that the Condiment King piece was different. That would have been cool. Scarecrow. Condiment King, rest of the wave. And here's his barcode, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be the same on both this one and the regular version. So, let's open them up and check them both out. Alright, now that these figures are out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Each Scarecrow figure comes with a collector's card, a Sith, Two alternate hands, totally four interchangeable hands, two heads, and then the torso of Condiment King. But before we take a look at all that, let's talk about and check out the actual figures. So this is Scarecrow, based off his look from Batman the Animated Series. Scarecrow actually had three different looks in the Animated Series. One for his first appearance. This was his look from Animated Series Seasons 1-3, through three, then a new look for Season 4. Now it would have been cool if the plot of Chase variant had a different head. Sort of looking like his first appearance. But instead, they went with a totally different paint variation, which is okay by me, but would have been really cool if it had that different Scarecrow head. I really do like the fact that it comes with an unmasked Jonathan Crane head. If they ever make a Hugo Strange, could make for a pretty cool Professor Crane body. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Scarecrow figure. We'll check out the accessories, height and articulation. We'll compare them with a bunch of other Scarecrow figures, a bunch of other animated figures, and some action figures from different various companies. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's start off by taking a look at the figure. So this is Scarecrow, the Professor of Fear. And look at him. He is creepy. He is sort of scary. He's got the straw hair, the big sort of Scarecrow hat, red shirt. He's got cell shading on his torso, actually on the entire figure. It looks like single jointed elbows, double jointed knees. We've got small double joint there. More cell shading on his legs. He looks good, lanky, maybe a little bit shorter than I'd like, but he definitely has that animated series look, and that is awesome. And then we also have the Platinum Chase version. This one is done in a brown and yellow color instead of brown and red, and it looks good. It's not accurate to anything in the show, but it's a pretty cool paint variation. Yellow hands, dark brown pants, light brown shirt. Happy to have both of them in the collection. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Creepy to say the least. I 
and a closer look at the Platinum Chase variant of Scarecrow's face, yellow face, red eyes, and here are the figures, broken down as far as they can go, with all of their removable parts detached. Now let's check out their accessories. Let's start with the boring stuff. Here's the Scarecrow's Collector's card. It is the same on both the Platinum Chase and the regular version of the Inmate series. Scarecrow. On the back, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. Now let's look at the Condiment King's torso. The Condiment King, a very obscure and unique Batman rogue. He's got the pickle sort of thing around his head. Got some cell shading, that looks awful on his face there. Condiment King logo there. A little bit more cell shading. And if you buy all four figures in the wave, you get to create Condiment King. I could not have picked for a better character selection. Love the fact that we got a Condiment King figure. Both torsos of Condiment King are exactly the same for the regular Scarecrow and the Planet of Chase variant. Like I said before, it would have been cool if something was different. Now let's look at his hands. He has a total of four of them. Two left hands and two right hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. His right hand is a gripping hand for his accessory and his left hand is a fist. And here's his alternate pair of hands. Kind of lanky, kind of creepy. His hands are outstretched. I like these pair of hands, but they can't hold anything, so I'm going to use the other hands for him most of the time. Now for his heads. They each go with two heads. The unmasked head and the masked head. Their masked heads are different. Their unmasked heads are exactly the same. Here's the difference between the original head that came with a DC Direct Scarecrow from many years ago, and then the new version by McFarlane. The one on the left is the new version, a little bit of a darker skin tone, and it's got some cell shading under the eyes and under the lip. Almost looks like a little start of a goatee. Here's a look at the standard version's head. This one has the Scarecrow mask on. And here's the unmasked Jonathan Crane head. And a closer look at the Platinum Chase variant's masked head. Here's a look at his Sith. This is the one that came with the regular version of Scarecrow. It's very long. The handle is done almost in a gray color. It's got an extra place for to hold it here. The blade is done in a sort of flat gray. It has some cell shading on one side. And here it is. Next to the one that came with the Platinum Chase Scarecrow. That one is done in a brown color on the handle. Here's Scarecrow holding that Sith. He has one gripping hand, but his open hand can help support it as well. Now I wanted to check out the differences between the DC Direct version they made a few years ago, McFarlane's re-release, and then the Planet of Chase variant. So looking at these first two, the red is a lot more vibrant on the new one. It's just sort of dull on the older one. The brown, same kind of thing. The paint job's just a lot better on this one. You can see they actually painted the buckle on the hat this time, whereas they didn't before. Beyond that, just everything, the color is a little bit better on the new one. He does have the cell shading on his leg here, not on the original. A little bit on his shirt here, nothing on the original. Both very nice releases. This original one is very expensive, but I'd say the McFarlane one is a much better paint job. And then of course, we also have this Platinum Chase variant. And the big difference is we've got brown, red, yellow, brown, etc. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his hat, standing at about six and a half inches tall, which could translate to 16 and a half centimeters. But the top of his hat is 6.5 inches tall. You know the top of his head is probably about 6.2, maybe 6.1 inches tall. Now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course, it can rotate from side to side. The hair is going to obstruct a lot of that though. Look up and down about this far. Now he does have articulation at the top of the neck and at the bottom of the neck, but you don't really get that much out of it. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Single jointed elbow goes in a little bit more than 90 degree with rotation. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged. Torso is one solid piece, got a ball joint in the waist, rotate around, that's about it, does not go forward and back. Legs, they go out about this far, not that far. Ball joints can rotate independently against the ball. Forward, about that far, really not very much. Double jointed knees, they go all the way back. And then his ankle, forward and back, tiny bit rotate 
and I don't really think it tilts or rocks. Here's a look at Scarecrow in a cemetery or graveyard type setting. A closer look at Scarecrow in front of the full moon. And here are all three different variations of this DC Direct Batman the Animated Series Scarecrow in the cemetery. Now let's check them out next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Scarecrow figures. Here they are next to the original version of the DC Direct Batman the Animated Series Scarecrow. And here they are next to the DC Direct, the new Batman Adventure Scarecrow. Same universe, different look. Then, next to an older Kenner, Batman the Animated Series Scarecrow, we have the big one and the small one. Here they are, next to all of my McFarlane DC Multiverse Scarecrow figures. And here they are, next to all of my DC Direct and DC Collectibles Scarecrow figures. Then, next to the Mayfix Dark Knight Trilogy Scarecrow. And now, with all of my Mattel Scarecrow figures, here they are, next to some older Kenner Scarecrow figures. Here are absolutely all of my Scarecrow figures. I would like to say I have all of them in the 6 and 7 inch scale, but I can think of at least a couple by DC Direct that I'm missing. Now let's check them out, next to some Scarecrow henchmen in my collection. Here they are, next to a couple of older Toy Biz Spider-Man Jack-O-Lantern figures. These are a smaller scale, but I've had these for a long time, back before there were really any options for henchmen. A little while later, Toy Biz was making 6 inch scale Marvel Legends figures and they revisited Jack O' Lantern. These are some pretty nice Scarecrow henchmen. And after that, eventually Hasbro did the Jack O' Lantern figure from the comics. Excellent Scarecrow henchmen. I'm really excited for the upcoming Spider Man the Animated Series version by Hasbro. Definitely gonna get three of those as well. And here they are, next to a couple of Arkham Knight style Scarecrow henchmen. I also like using these Skull Trooper figures from Fortnite as Scarecrow henchmen. I have a whole bunch in both the 6 inch and the 7 inch scale. Here's an example of the Scarecrow figures next to the 7 inch version on the left and the 6 inch version on the right. The 7 inch version works perfect with your McFarlane DC Multiverse stuff and your 6 inch version on the right works perfect with these Scarecrow figures. But since I have plenty of other Scarecrow henchmen, I have now promoted these guys or maybe demoted these guys to Lord Deathman henchmen. Now let's check them out, next to some other DC Direct, Batman the Animated Series figures. Here are these Scarecrow figures, next to the rest of this new wave. We have the Batman the Animated Series, Mr. Freeze, Scarecrow, Batman, a repainted Scarecrow, and then the Dick Grayson Robin. If you get all of these figures, and you don't actually have to get all of them, you can get either or Scarecrow, you get to build Condiment King. And let's not forget, there's also a Batman the Animated Series re-release of the Bat Cycle in this wave. Now these aren't the first re-releases that McFarland has done from Batman the Made series. The previous one they did was a four pack with Bullock, Batman, the Joker, and Harley Quinn. The Laughing Fish four pack. McFarland's first continuation of DC Direct's Batman the Animated series line was sort of the last wave. DC Direct was releasing figures and there were two waves they revealed that didn't get released. McFarland released the Catwoman the New Adventures of Batman, and The Batman Who Laughs. There is still another wave that was never released, and I imagine McFarland will eventually crank it out, and that one has a couple of figures that caught my attention. Vampire Batman, Thomas Wayne Batman, and then Talon. Really hope those see the light of day. Here's a Scarecrow, next to the DC Direct versions of Batman, Robin, and Batgirl from Batman the Animated Series. And here they are, next to the DC Direct Bat Family from the new Batman Adventures. Same universe, new design. Here's a look at all the Batman villains. Batman the Animated Series style. These are done with DC Direct. Gonna add Conovent King to this mix. And here's a look at all the different animated villains. The new Batman Adventure style. Different style, same universe. They all look fantastic next to each other. Now let's talk about next to some action figures from different various companies. So we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise, in case you don't know what signs you can mix them with. Since they're DC Direct, Batman the Animated Series figures, they're typically the 6-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the smaller action figure lines I collect, and work way larger. Here they are, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures, and some SH Figure Arts action figures. And here they are, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends, and some Mafex figures. Here they are, next to a thing of Grape Jelly. Then, with both some Mattel and some Mezco DC figures. And now, 
with some jazz wares and some Mattel wrestling figures. Here they are, next to some NECA and some DC Direct, DC Collectibles figures. Then, with some Diamond Select and some Jack Specific figures. And finally, here they are, next to some McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. Overall, these are some pretty cool Scarecrow figures. They look really good, the likeness from Batman the Animated Series. Joints, limbs, a little bit thinner than I'd like. I do appreciate the double jointed knees. This is when DC Direct was sort of improving the figures. This was a fantastic wave. And Scarecrow is one of the most sought after DC Direct Batman the Animated Series figures, probably behind Alfred and Montoya. This guy was selling for like $330 on eBay. I'm sure this re-release here is going to totally drive down the value of that figure, and that's fine by me. Let's talk about the cell shading. They did an excellent job. They didn't overdo it like they did on Batman and Robin. It's just right. Very subtle. I think the colors are a little more vibrant on him than the original release. And it's really cool to have a Platinum Chase variant. This is the first one in the entire DC Direct Batman the Animated Series line, and the line is quite extensive. His articulation, it's good, not great. The accessories are fantastic. The unmasked head and the scythe, they are great. Sculpt and paint job, excellent. Face looks pretty creepy, and I like it. If I were to rate this figure, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Teetering, probably a 7. I'm going to push up to a 7. I like it. I like the original release. But if you're a completist like myself and you already have this figure, then it doesn't really do that much for you. Yes, it's a little bit better paint job, but that's about it. So from that point of view, it's disappointing. But it's really nice that collectors get a chance to fill this in the gap in their collection. Because a lot of people missed him before. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I will talk to you guys real soon.